Bear, and I serve as the Bible Quizzing Director for UPCI Youth Ministries. Several years ago, I taught a youth workers session entitled Youth Ministry Traps. Now, this is not the place, nor do I have the time to get into that whole session. I would, however, like to play off that session to share how the ministry of Bible quizzing is designed to evade some of those traps. As I explained then, the thing about the best traps is that they don't appear as traps. And sometimes, some of the things we do in youth ministry, with the best intentions, have negative long-term consequences. They are, in fact, traps that undermine our goals as youth ministers to develop young people as current and future leaders. Now, whenever someone asks me, Bible quizzing, what's that? I always describe it as a leadership development ministry. 30 years ago, in a quiz devotion where I sat as a quizzer, I first heard the late, great Norman Pasley II describe Bible quizzing as the West Point of youth ministry. That never left me. Now, Brother Pasley did not mean it in the sense that Bible quizzing is exclusive, because it's not. Any young person can be a Bible quizzer. In fact, in fact, many times, the young person that you'd least expect to quiz blows your expectations out of the water. Now, what Brother Pasley meant was that Bible quizzing develops leaders, not unlike West Point produces army officers. Leadership is influence, and we all want our young people to be influencers in the world and the church today. So, for this session, we will focus on how Bible quizzing seeks to avoid some potential pitfalls in youth ministry, and in doing so, helps develop young people into leaders. Before we dive in, however, allow me to add one key proviso. Growing up, I was taught by my pastor that no one should be exclusively involved in a single ministry, because no ministry on a local, district, or national level exists in a vacuum. A single ministry alone results in myopia, like tunnel vision, that does not grant us an appreciation for other ministries and how they all work together. To that end, Bible quizzing works best when it dovetails with other youth ministries like P7 and CMI, AYC, and Hyphen. These are all meant to work together, and the dynamic result is always greater than the sum of their parts. So, how does Bible quizzing develop leaders? This is by no means exhaustive, and I could easily spend an hour or more on each of the seven points I have, but here we go. Number one, Bible quizzing is built on the Word of God. Now, I know this sounds like a no-brainer. It is Bible quizzing after all. But we cannot assume that young people in our churches today, even those raised in church, automatically possess a biblical worldview. A significant portion of what they hear is about the Bible or refers to the Bible, but may be derived from the world or current evangelical culture and not the Bible itself. Whenever we're faced with a tough issue, our response should always be, what does the Bible say? Which is difficult to answer if we don't actually know the Bible. Now, previous generations lived by an acquired set of teachings and beliefs that in general weren't too far from the Bible. And even if people didn't live them, they often believed in their value. Within the church, we call our teachings and beliefs doctrine. It used to be that when preaching or teaching, it was very often enough to say that the Bible says this, and to stand on the doctrine alone, because many, if not most, could then relate it to their individual lives. In today's postmodern, postmillennial world, however, where everything is relative, each individual becomes the litmus test for what is right. How I live my life determines what is right, and not what is right determining how I live my life. So what's my point? And my point is, is that if we're not careful in our well-intentioned efforts to be relevant in today's youth culture, 
We can shape important beliefs not by the Bible itself, but by the everyday practice of the young people themselves. We've always got to go back to the Word. Even if we don't start there when we communicate, we must create a direct line of sight to Scripture, or it'll all end up being relative. As well as we teach and preach about the Bible, there is no substitute for the very Scriptures themselves. Bible quizzing hides 500 plus verses in young people's hearts each year, year after year. It has been said many times that Bible quizzing gets young people into the Word and the Word into young people. This reliance upon the Scripture alone reinforces the timeless relevance of the Word of God and resists cultural efforts to reshape its meaning. Number two, Bible quizzing happens daily. After many years of youth ministry, from personal experience and observation, I would say that the most difficult thing to establish in the life of a young person is their daily prayer and devotion in the Word. Time spent with the Word is time spent with God. But the ups and downs of life, its demands and distractions, all work against being consistent and faithful to our personal relationship with God. We can't give what we don't have. So if we're constantly running on empty, getting refills only at church once or twice a week, we won't have enough to share with others in need. Bible quizzing helps establish that everyday pattern of being in the Word, praying over the Word, and listening for a Word. The desktop image on my laptop is an iceberg. And it's there to remind me that the 90% that is not seen supports the 10% that is seen. Our public life is an outflow of our private life, which is an outflow of our prayer life. Jesus made it clear that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We can't follow without a daily walk. Number three, Bible quizzing entails application and accountability. Now, feelings. Feelings are difficult to quantify. We're all emotional beings, and yet for me to accurately convey exactly how I feel is not only challenging for me, but I have no guarantee that my listener can receive the feeling that I'm feeling. In fact, it's far more likely that while they may approximate my feelings, their feelings are going to be their own, no matter how much I want them to feel what I feel. As Pentecostals, we definitely worship with our emotions. We cry, we shout, run, and dance. And in God's presence, we should forget about ourselves and respond as the Spirit leads. But feelings and emotions are near impossible to apply identically from one person to another, and then hold that person accountable for how I think they should feel. In that moment, in, in any one moment, feelings are what they are, even the bad ones. It's how we act on them and hold ourselves accountable and those in our trust that makes the difference. Now, if you've ever sat in on a quiz tournament, you know that Bible quizzing can get emotional and it's amplified by our nerves. But regardless of how we feel after we win or lose, we are presented with the opportunity to apply life lessons about grace, faith, humility, about discipline, dependence, and Christ-like character in general. These lessons that are ultimately to be transferred from the quiz board into life. Bible quizzing provides coaches and officials, mentors, who despite how we're feeling, hold us accountable to a standard higher than our feelings. Number four, Bible quizzing necessitates teamwork. 
When we're born, we're completely dependent. We'd die if somebody else didn't feed us and clean us and clothe us. Then from about the time we learn to crawl all the way up until our late teens, early 20s, we grow more and more independent. Now the world thinks that independence is the ultimate goal. I've reached the top, I can do it on my own, I don't need any of your help, I can prove my own worth. But that's not how God designed his church. He designed us to be interdependent. The whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Not only does Bible quizzing obviously require teammates to even participate, but you won't be on a team long before you realize and eventually appreciate that everyone brings something to the table that makes the whole team stronger. Now I'm not talking about how many points each quizzer scores. Points are a parable we can learn from, but they're not our main spiritual goal. I'm talking about personalities, prayer, points of view. There is no ministry or church in which we do not work for the kingdom as a team. Every member of the body is necessary and fulfills their unique role relative to every other member. Bible quizzing emphasizes teamwork because the kingdom requires teamwork. Not even Jesus worked solo. Number five, Bible quizzing is multi-generational. Now I'm going to speak in some broad terms, but stick with me. Modern evangelical youth ministry typically separates young people from the rest of the church and from their parents specifically then ministers to them alone in a vacuum. This has been the trend for almost 30 years. As an easy example, a general easy example, this vacuum could have set design, environmental projection, lasers and fog machines, all of which are really cool and some of which I've used before as a youth pastor. But when used in isolation, time and again, elements such as these don't really provide any transition from that kind of youth atmosphere to the larger church where there are no lasers or fog machines. If we're not careful, we can create a silo effect, a kind of like a church within a church that reinforces or even enlarges the distance between young people and the other generations within the church. Now, don't get me wrong, young people need teaching and preaching and activities and events that are specific to them, that grow them from who they are to whom God wants them to be. It's just that the modern evangelical youth ministry model, as I've only briefly described it, is not really found in scripture. The biblical model is family ministry. The church or youth group was never intended to become a proxy or a replacement for an existing family or to remove parents' responsibility to teach and train their young people. They are partners to strengthen and grow the family as a healthy unit. If Satan's goal is to bring division, and it is, and widen the generation gap between parents and young people, then the church should be countercultural and seek to narrow that gap as much as possible. Youth ministers are wonderfully positioned to bring young people and parents together if we are proactive and intentional about ministering and communicating with both groups. Bible quizzing is multi generational, it brings young people and their parents together around the Word of God, ideally on a daily basis. What an incredible combination. Go to virtually any quiz tournament and you will see parents and even grandparents supporting, working with, and ministering to young people. This underpins the biblical model of family ministry, narrows the generation gap, and strengthens the church as a whole. 
Number six, Bible quizzing breaks down walls. Now, this point kind of flows from the last one. Not only does Bible quizzing seek to break down walls between generations, but one of the many perks of Bible quizzing is getting to travel to tournaments and events outside our local church and district. As a young person who grew up in a small North American missions church, it was called Home Missions at that time, the chance for me to see more of the world and to make friends from all over the United States and Canada and to be exposed to different churches and different cultures, and different leaders, it all worked together to break down any presuppositions with which I grew up and expand my appreciation for God's whole church. Even if I encountered someone or something that I wasn't too sure that I agreed with, I learned as a young person that unless it was a key doctrinal issue, I was going to prioritize the unity of the body. Regardless of a quizzer's background, there's just something about investing all that time and all that effort and all that emotion into the Word of God that knits young people together across the miles and generations and breaks down those walls. Lastly, number seven. Bible quizzing requires long-term vision. As the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, consolidated his power, it came to light that he had two half-brothers between the ages of four and seven who had been hidden from him. With his mother distracted and eventually placed under house arrest, the emperor had these two young boys killed. They were not killed because of any power or influence that they held at the time. The emperor was over 20 years older and was supreme over his empire. No, these two young boys were killed because of the potential threat they posed when they would come to maturity years down the road. The emperor eliminated them when it was easiest to do so. Youth ministers, Satan views our young people in the same way. He seeks to compromise them, even eliminate them if he can, not necessarily because of the threat they currently pose, but because of the substantial threat that they will pose when they fully mature, full of the Word and full of the Spirit. The devil knows that now in their young lives is the easiest time he's ever going to have to marginalize and defeat them. And if Satan has such long-term vision, certainly we can have no less. Now, to a youth minister who's not involved in quizzing, I readily admit, I, I get it, that Bible quizzing can seem to yield few short-term results, especially relative to the time and the money and the effort that's invested. But the Word of God in the life of a young person is like compound interest that builds over time and yields incredible long-term results if we have the vision and patience to see it happen. Last year, I was challenged by a quote from John Acuff in which he said, Want a kind 16-year-old? Teach a six-year-old kindness, then give him 10 years to practice. I don't know if that hits you the same way it hit me as a father and a youth minister. But Bible quizzing also involves practice, takes time, and requires long-term vision. So, to review how Bible quizzing develops leaders. It is built on the Word of God. It happens daily. It entails application and accountability. It necessitates teamwork. It is multi-generational. Bible quizzing breaks down walls and requires long-term vision. If you'd like to learn more about starting Bible quizzing in your church, please contact UPCI Youth Ministries and we'll help all we can. God bless. <music>